So we want to use this service as, as a reminder and as a thanksgiving to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Reminder and thanksgiving to the Lord for what he has done for us. You see, some people see church as something, a social gathering. So if, the, if it, it doesn't meet their nature of social gathering, they don't have a need to go to church. But those of us who have been touched by the Spirit of God, it's not just a social gathering. There's a, a, a type of social gathering in it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because we are family of God. But there's more to the church than being a social gathering. And one of the things I want to talk about today is something that we don't hear about a lot. Eternal fire. And the confusion that people have about eternal fire. When you go down on the street now and begin to ask people, what do you think about eternal fire? First of all, you'll be up, you get so many different answers. The reason is because what you're asking them sometimes is not what they're answering. Because they don't understand the question in the first place. Part of answering properly is knowing the answer question. Amen? Amen. Amen. Knowing the end question, that part of us. So today we're going to look at eternal fire as described by the Bible. What is eternal fire? And who is ending up in eternal fire? Who will end up in eternal fire? What is eternal fire made? For? Why is it made? The eternal fire. I'm using the word eternal fire because I want you to see the difference. Eventually, we're going to use another word. you find that that word is not the same. Amen? People interchange them as one and the same. So the point of this message is this. Do you know what eternal fire is and who will end up in eternal fire? Why was eternal fire created? As a child of God, you should know that. Praise the Lord. Because it's written in the Bible. And it's not a, uh, uh, something very, very difficult to grasp. So I want us to first of all look at uh, one misunderstanding that people have when it comes to eternal fire. Many people will tell that eternal fire is for the unrighteous. That eternal fire is for the unrighteous. I don't want to say raise your hand if you believe that because it's, uh, I'm kind of trying to get your attention. Praise the Lord. Amen. When I say to you that eternal fire is not for the unrighteous, huh? what are you talking about? Yes, eternal fire is not for the unrighteous. That's what I said. Now, I'm going to prove it to you that eternal fire is not for the unrighteous. Amen? Amen. You should say, prove it to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I get proof it to me? Prove it to me. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us start by looking at Romans chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. We want to see who will end up in the eternal fire and that the eternal fire is actually not for the unrighteous. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. The scripture says, what then? Are we better than they? Not at all, for we have all previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is no righteous, no, not one. Praise the Lord. The Bible says there is nobody righteous. So if the time eternal fire is for the unrighteous, then all the unrighteous will end up in eternal fire. You see where I'm going with this? You're going to wait for me to land, then you will see where I'm going with it. You'll know where I have started, then let's see where I'm going. I have it, I say to you that all humans start their journey in this world as unrighteous. Praise the Lord. Everyone on this earth started this life as unrighteous. Unrighteous means you are not righteous in the eye of God. Because you came through Adam and Eve. Praise the Lord. So if eternal fire is for the unrighteous, then we are all going to eternal fire. But we know better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody is born into this world as a righteous human being. Except our Lord Jesus. But he did not come from Adam. Praise the Lord. 
It did not come from Adam. So if that is the case, who is going to end up in eternal fire? Well, I say this. You and I will not end up in eternal fire in Jesus' name. Amen. We will not end up in eternal fire in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now we are going to look in the Bible. Those who will end up in eternal fire <coughs> for us to find out. As I was looking, I first started thinking, oh, you know, two, people, two types of people will end up in eternal fire. As I kept going, the thing keeps stretching, keep adding, keep adding. I ended up with seven types of creatures. Remember I said the word creatures now, amen? amen? Creatures for a reason. You have to think beyond human. You have to think beyond human because God is bigger than human, praise the Lord. Amen. God's creation and God's world is bigger than this little ball we call the earth that we live in. Yes, God is way bigger dimension and all kinds of things bigger than what we can see with our own eyes. So the word creature is appropriate here. So I say seven creatures will end up in eternal fire. Let's start the first one. Look in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 says, Then he will also say to those who are on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So number one, the first one that is guaranteed to be in the eternal fire is the devil. Amen? Amen. He is a tenant number one. He's a creature of his own. He's tenant number one. He's going to end up in eternal fire. In this scripture, we also have an idea of the second tenant. The second tenant are the fallen angels. Praise the Lord. Amen. Fallen angels, tenant number two. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tenant number two. Now, let us go to tenant number three of eternal fire. Go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10 says, The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Tenant number three is the beast. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we now have the, angel, the devil, the fallen angels. Tenant number three is the beast. Tenant number four is the false prophet. The false prophet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have four already. These, these creatures are guaranteed to last in the everlasting fire. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change that. Let's go to the next one. Look in Revelation chapter 20 verse 14. 20 verse 14. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Remember I started by saying creatures. Tenant number five is death. See, death is not just something that happens to people. Death is a creature. The creature, we don't have time here to explain why death is a creature and stuff, but we know that Bible says death came into the earth, to the world, right? Because of sin. Death is a creature, it's not just something that happens to people. Death is a creature, it's an entity, a different dimension that we can't handle right now. So that is tenant number five. Tenant number six is Hades. Hades. Depending on your translation, it will say hell. Praise the Lord. Anyone has a translation that says hell? Let me see your hand up. Exactly. Hell. Hell. The same hell people are afraid to go to. They don't know that even hell itself is in trouble. The time is coming that hell itself will be thrown into the fire. Remember I said creatures, praise the Lord. There's more to this thing that you will find out in the just top level. 
So hell is tenant number six. And justifiable so. Hell is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. So this lake of fire is very uh, you don't want to go near the lake of fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything that ends up in the lake of fire is the worst of the worst. Why would any human even give themselves a chance to end up in the lake of fire? Finally, the last tenant that will complete the seven that will end up in the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. And anyone not found written in the book of life will be cast into that lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. These are human. The final tenant. Final tenant. So what do we have? So we have seven of them. Right? The devil, angels, power prophets, the beast, dead, we have babies, we have humans, we have fallen angels. Right? All these people are going to the lake of fire. We were not made for the lake of fire, the Bible said. We're not made for the Bible. That is, for the Bible. That is why we need Jesus Christ. Because remember I said, the unrighteous is not going to the lake of fire. Because when we met Jesus, we were unrighteous. But he converted us from the unrighteous to the righteous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we were to remain unrighteous, or if the lake of fire was for the righteous, then we were already condemned. Or we, are, we, are, we have no way out. But Jesus became our way out. That's the point I'm trying to make. We may have started as unrighteous. We didn't have to stay unrighteous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We didn't have to stay unrighteous. Because we used to be unrighteous does not mean that God looks at us as unrighteous today. That is the point I'm trying to make. Jesus came to make sure that those of us who don't want to be, we don't want to remain unrighteous can escape this horrible, terrible lake of fire. This is why the Lord will say, go here into the world and preach the good news, the good news with Jesus Christ, giving us a way out, a way of escape. That is what the people of God need to know. That is the foundation of who we are. It's not just being a member of a church or attending church. There are many people who attend church who are not born again. They will end up in the lake of fire. Because there are those, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Those people who are going to the lake of fire, they don't they can't see the kingdom of God. They can claim to be in the kingdom of God, but they cannot see that was mentioned going into it. The early days of ministry for me, I had a, a vision, a dream that changed my, my perspective of everything. There are some large crowd just going. Another once in a while one person will get off the road. Once in a while one person will get there, thousands of just people and they are all just marching to hell. The Lord will not let us end up in the lake of fire in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the good news of Jesus Christ is that we don't have to end up there. Jesus agreed to do that work for us. He agreed to do whatever he took to make sure that you and I do not end up in the lake of fire. That we don't become tenants with Satan and the false prophets and the beasts and demons and devils.